Okay. Um, just give me a minute. We are in Bhaktiyaloka 12. So, Pranash Pancharyas, Bhaktiyaloka Thakur, Bhaktiyaloka, Enhance, and here, in this practice of devotional service, where is that? It's okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. Wait. Yes. Right. In this practice of devotional service, duplicitous association has been prohibited. Even in street sankirtan, one should chant and dance in the association of pure devotees. One should not chant in the association of non-devotees. Except if you're trying to spread Krishna consciousness without being, without allowing the non-devotees to spread Krishna unconsciousness unto ourselves. A householder should fully depend on the will of the Lord in all his activities. The Lord says in the Chaitanya Bhagavat, Chuno Mata Ishore Rodhin Sansar Satantra Hoite Shakti Nahiko Kahar. Listen, dear mother, the whole world is under the control of the Lord. No one has the power to become independent. In household life, um, according to one's previous Punya or Papa, one will go through. Uh, a series of material happiness and material unhappiness. And there's not much we can do about these material experiences. Therefore, it is important to understand that everything is under Krishna's control. Uh, this is a point which repeatedly comes in Bhagavad Gita, that we should understand that everything is under Krishna's control. Otherwise, we develop the idea that I should do such and such activities by which I will attain material happiness and avoid material unhappiness. But a combination of material happiness and unhappiness is unavoidable as long as we are in material existence. Uh, we have to carry out our material duties in Krishna consciousness in such a manner that we progress in Krishna consciousness. The householder should cautiously give up the association of non-devotees, women, and luxurious people. What's this word? Let me find out. Why is it like this? It is just yeah, one minute. Luxurious, having or showing a great or excessive fondness for one's wife. Straina. Straina means, uh, Straina is the actual word used by Muktivan And uh, it generally means henpeck, a henpecked man. A man who is dependent on his wife for his existence. In the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, the Lord said, Asat Sangatya gave Vaishnava Achas, Sri Sangiya ka Sadhu Krishna Bhakta. A Vaishnava should always avoid the association of ordinary people. Common people are very much materially attached, especially to women. Vaishnavas should also avoid the company of those who are not devotees of Lord Krishna. By following his prescribed duties, a grace Vaishnava should accumulate wealth for his maintenance. He should not accumulate wealth by sinful means. Lord Nityananda Prabhu has stated in the Chaitanya Bhagavat. Uh, this is regarding the point that one should not accumulate wealth by sinful means. Chunod 
ধর্ম পথে গিয়া তুমি লোহরি না তবে তুমি অন্যের করিবা পরিত্রাণ যত সব দস্যু চোর ডাকিয়া আনিয়া ধর্ম পথে সভারে লাভ তুমি গিয়া now listen carefully o brahmana i will take responsibility for all your previous mistakes if you do not repeat them so this is lord nityananda prabhu the most merciful uh, incarnation of the of uh, a devotee the lord in the uh, with the mood of a devotee bhakta avatar amongst them the, the most merciful is lord nityananda but this is the mercy the mercy is that you should stop engaging in uh, various degrading activities and i will take responsibility so all bona fide representatives of lord nityananda also talk like this it is not uh, free for all you know, we can go on committing uh, sinful activities and offenses and forbidden activities and um, nityananda prabhu or his representatives have nothing to do in life other than to save them to save us no more aggression violence looting or murder give them up forever when we say and this is something that i asked my guru maharaj shri jayapada maharaj at the time of initiation we are getting devotees to say um that they will avoid the four primary sinful activities so what about uh, other uh, forbidden activities like you cannot be violent upon uh, a, a devotee you cannot there are so many other forbidden criminal sinful activities what about these so my guru maharaj said actually at the time when one promises i will avoid the four primary sinful activities all of these are included in that so we don't actually necessarily have to promise to our guru at the time of initiation i will not um, torture others i will not be violent i will not steal i will not murder i will not become a terrorist we don't have to say these things all of these things are included in when you say now if um uh, if you think that devotees don't get the point then it must be clarified what can be done once uh, ila tamal krishna maharaj he said when uh, narottam das thakur Uh, would give initiation he did not have to ask his uh, prospective disciples uh, whether uh, they would uh, avoid meat eating intoxication illicit sex gambling because it was understood it was commonly understood only when it is not clear then you have to make things clear in today's world these things are very unclear people do not understand that spiritual experience is diabolic is is categorically opposed to uh, sinful activities and these are the four primary sinful activities noted in shrimad bhagavatam as being prominent in kali yuga so therefore these four as are uh, uh, taken as being representative of various forbidden activities now for in this context of lord nityananda prabhu's uh, instructions this is uh, lord nityananda is talking to some so called brahman uh, who had his uh, gang who were trying to steal um, aggressively actually so lord nityananda has to make it clear to them um, so that's what he is saying give them up forever lead a religious life and chant the holy names of the supreme lord then later you can also save others tobe tumi onnere koriba paritra tobe means then because you cannot you cannot spread religious principles or spiritual experience unless you adhere to them that is a basic principle then later on you can also save others go and meet other decoits and murderers and bring them to the path of pure religious life and apart from that it is our duty to to also bring people like us or who were like us uh, to the path of uh, dharma um, standard religious principles the platform of standard religious principles and execute krishna consciousness and progress 
uh, on that platform so anyway the basic point is uh, even though a householder is responsible to bring uh, money to maintain his uh, family members his father mother his um, brothers sisters his wife children and so on uh, he should not accumulate wealth by sinful means this is a point that bhutyana thakur makes elsewhere also uh, the very very serious matters because otherwise you will not be able to progress that's all it's a simple thing you won't be able to progress a householder should not hanker for another's wife or prostitutes This is exhibited in the Lord's dealings with Krishna Das in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Gosayir Sangeera Hey Krishna Das Brahman, Bhatta Dhari Soha Taha Poilo Darshan, Sri Dhan Dekhaya Tar Lok Dan Maiilo, Arjo Saral Vikrer Budhi Nash Koilo. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was accompanied by his servant Krishna Das. He was a Brahman, but he met with the Bhatta Dharis there with women. the bhatadaris alert the brahman krishnadas who was simple and gentle by virtue of their bad association they polluted his intelligence simple is not always a, a glorious attribute like here uh, krishnadas brahman who was simple but here in this context simple uh, turns out to mean foolish one has to be very very careful while associating with those who are not noble in character and at that time we cannot afford to be simple like this the lord protected that brahman from the woman's clutches by pulling him by the hair literally the words saral vipra mean a weak hearted young brahman weak hearted not having sufficient determination sufficient um res- resoluteness he is a real householder who chants 100000 names every day this is 64 rounds pure devotee should accept prasad in the houses of such grihasthas in the chaitanya bhagavat the lord said prabhu bole jano lakshyeshwar boli kare proti din lakshanam je grahan kare she janer naam ami boli lakshyeshwar तथा भिक्षा आमार ना जाए अन्न घर द लॉर्ड रिप्लाई डू यू नो हु इज अ लक्षेश्वर इन इंडियन इंग्लिश वी हैव द एक्सप्रेशन लाखपति जस्ट एज इन इंग्लिश स्टैंडर्ड इंग्लिश वी हैव मिलियन एयर वन ऑफ प्रोसेस इज अ मिलियन डॉलर्स बिलियन एयर वन ऑफ प्रोसेस इज अ लाख हंड्रेड थाउजेंड Um, is considered a lakpati uh, lakshapati original lakshyeshwar so uh, the lord is uh, the lord he said i only eat at the home of one who earns 100000 literally literally lakshyeshwar and then he says this do you know who is that he is someone who chants one laksha or 100000 holy names every day i call such a person a lakshyeshwar i only take meals in that person's house no one else uh, so bhakti sir then the sir sir he often said that uh, when we offer food stuffs to the deities the person who is offering if he doesn't chant uh, 100000 holy names uh, to gornita deity the lord chaitanya is not accepting it and it is only so called prasad it is not prasad and you are eating actually unoffered food um, and he stuck to it bhakti sir then the sir sir stuck to this it is not just this principle rather it is lord chaitanya's rule uh, i used to think it is bhakti siddhanta sarasvati ko standard until i uh, came across uh, this statement when i understood it's actually lord chaitanya's standard um, even right here in mayapur in uh, uh, chaitanya mat yogapeet there were many devotees during his time and sometimes they protested said you are giving us so much of uh, services and on top of it you are demanding that we should chant 64 rounds how is it possible to do all these things 
Then Professor Dhan Sushma became even more angry and gave longer lectures on this, saying, "No, you are wasting your time in atyahara, prayasa, prajalpa, niyamagraha, janasanga, laulya." Then chant. You are not chanting. Bhakti Siddhanta Sushtagur, after he set up the Gaudiya Mat, he is estimated to have chanted every day, uh, 128 rounds every day. This is after he started the Gaudiya Mat. In the middle of all the different things that he was doing, he was also doing this. Prabhupada has also given sufficient indications that uh, we are meant to increase the quality and quantity of our chanting. So this comes as no surprise for one who is aware of these instructions by Prabhupada. There is no difference between smarters and Vaishnavas regarding following the codes of religion. The reason why Bhakti Nath Thakur is saying this is because householders are duty bound to exhibit the same. adherence to standard principles of vedic dharma that the non vaishnavas in vedic dharma also are meant to adhere to it is not that because now that you are a hari krishna householder you can you do things everything differently now you don't maintain your family you don't take care of your children you don't follow the standard prescriptions prohibitions allowances meant for household life that even the non devotees are meant to follow standard principles not that you know you become some great soul you become some superman and superwoman just because we started uh, chanting hare krishna rama it's not like that mm-hmm. On, uh, until after our anarthas disappear until we lose propensities for forbidden activities um, i've already uh, separately sent out bhakti not thakur's list of anarthas after those anarthas disappear then we can claim these privileges but until then we have to follow the standard principles Um, for instance, yeah, and that for grihatyagis, this is for grihastas. But then for there are grihatyagis, there are uh, those who are not grihastas, the non-grihastas. For the non-grihastas also, they are meant to ha- accept the standard principles of internal detachment and external renunciation that the non-devotees also are meant to accept. The gyanis, the yogis, they they also accept. the same standard principles of internal detachment and external renunciation and the non grihasthas amongst the bhakti yogis will also have to accept the same thing not that we become so special you know i'm so special that uh, i can do all kinds of things um, we will see we will see uh, the rules for the non grihasthas also coming up adham janer je achar jeno dharma adhikari vaishnavayo kare sei dharma कृष्ण कृपा से यह जानी बारे पारे ये सब संकटे कैसे ये सब संकटे के हो मोरे के हो तोरे समटाइम्स एन एग्जॉल्टेड वैष्णव एग्जिबिट्स द सेम एक्टिविटीज एज अ मटेरियलिस्टिक पर्सन well actually this uh, verse does not say that it says um a standard vaishnava accepts the same um, regulations and principles of religion and conduct uh that are accepted by um fallen people that means by non devotees the materialistic people in other words he doesn't transgress the standard principles of vedic dharma the one who can understand this by krishna's mercy uh okay one can understand this only by krishna's mercy otherwise in this dilemma one may be liberated or destroyed the purport is that the conviction in the heart of a vaishnava is independent if one is a vaishnava then he can understand the conviction in the heart of another vaishnava who is engaged in the same activities 
as those of the smartas. One who cannot understand this cannot respect Vaishnavas and he thereby goes to hell. Actually, uh, the moment we accept um, the principles of religion, then immediately we are accepting a new set of restrictions. As we go higher and higher and higher, we accept more and more restrictions. Uh, those who accept Vedic Dharma, they are more restricted in thought, word and deed than those who are adharmic. And those who are interested in a transcendental achievement, liberation or love of God, they are even more restricted. And those who are interested in attaining love for Krishna, they are even more restricted. So the more one actually progresses, the more restricted it is. You can just examine the activities of the six Goswamis, how renounced externally and internally they were, how much restricted they were. Uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, the standard Acharya uh, for, the, for those who are intensely desirous of attaining Prayojana, love of Krishna. Uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, he would chant 64 rounds, he would offer obeisances to uh, at least a thousand Vaishnavas and, uh, per day. And uh, he would take only a few uh, drops of buttermilk to sustain himself. Restriction, restriction, restriction. And that is very natural for one who progresses in Krishna consciousness. So those who have upgraded from adharma to dharma, that is the lowest, that is the first step you can say. Then he will accept the rest same restrictions that the non-devotees also accept. Restrictions, all kinds of restrictions. Um, right. That's okay. The Lord has explained the duties of householders in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhu Kohen, Krishna Seva, Vaishnav, Sebon, Nirantar, Kaurav, Krishna, Nama, Sankirtan. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, without cessation, continue chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. Whenever possible, serve him and his devotees, the Vaishnavas. It is the duty of a grihastha to constantly chant the holy names of the Lord and serve the Vaishnavas and the Lord with the help of his relatives and by the wealth he has earned through his Pious life. Regarding serving the Vaishnavas, one should know that there are three types of non duplicitous devotees. Serving such Vaishnavas is called Vaishnava Seva. So, serving non duplicitous devotees uh, who are either Kanishta or Madhyama or Uttama. Everybody engaged in Navida Bhakti is not a, necessarily a Bhakti yogi in the first place, unless he is hankering to attain the result of Bhakti and unless he is pursuing uh, that path. Even the yogis, jnanis and karmis, they execute uh, Vishnu Bhakti in order to attain their respective goals of uh, um, yoga siddhi or jnana siddhi or karma siddhi. The perfection of karma is to attain um, elevation in the next life. The perfection of jnana is to attain personalistic liberation and so on. So they will also be executing uh, Hari Bhakti, the activities, uh, the various items of devotion service to Lord Hari. <clears throat> because without that, they will not attain what they want. But that does not make that person into a devotee, into a Bhakti Yogi. A Vaishnava is one who is a Bhakti Yogi. There is no need to gather many Vaishnavas by invitation. Whenever a Vaishnava comes for any purpose, he should be properly served with care. By gathering many Vaishnavas, one may commit offenses. As stated in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhavutu Sannasi Jodi Aise Ek Thai Saman Kurite Nari Avaraj Pai. If all the sannyasis come together, it would not be possible for me, it would not be possible for me to pay them, to pay them proper respects. Therefore, I would be an offender. So, this is what is called Vaishnav Seva. Now in Bengal, there's a custom that you just call different people chant, who chant Hare Krishna together and you give them prasadam and that is called Vaishnav Seva. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he said, this is not, not like that. You have to carefully examine are they um, you know, pure Vaishnavas or not? These Many things are there. You need to examine. 
we said this uh, this first of all uh, this is actually um, entered into bengali society um, in imitation of the system of brahman bhojan in the karma shastras there is an arrangement for particular occasions uh, arrangements during particular occasions uh, to call brahmanas and feed them so based on that somebody invented vaishnav bhojan and then changed the name to vaishnav seva but it is that is not actually vaishnav seva vaishnav seva matyuno thakur writes elsewhere in a separate article uh, he points out vaishnav seva means uh, you bring together vaishnavas who are up to the pure standards of uh, krishna consciousness as taught by chaitanya mahaprabhu and then um, one is supposed to serve them it is the duty of grihastha vaishnava to show mercy on the poor and fallen as stated in chaitanya charitamrita dine doya kore ei sadhu subhav hoy it is a characteristic of all saintly persons to be kind toward the poor and fallen so the grihastha vaishnava have to um, have to be charitable to the poor and uh, the fallen bhakti siddhanta sarstal guru criticizes his uh, grihastha disciples who pretended to be transcendental to this duty a grihastha vaishnava should not desire to give up his body merely out of some sentiment or anger as stated by the lord in chaitanya charitamrita देह त्यागादि जोतो सब तमो धर्म तमो रजो धर्मे कृष्णेर ना पाइये मर्म एक्ट सच ए सुसाइड और इन्फ्लुएंस बाय द मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस एंड एन इग्नोरेंस एंड पैशन वन कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड हू कृष्ण इज वेरी क्लियर डायरेक्ट एविडेंस फ्रॉम द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु हिमसेल्फ दैट एज लॉन्ग एज वी आर इन तमो गुण एंड रजो गुण दैट्स नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ knowing understanding and realizing krishna suicide and so on are tamasya if at all you feel like committing suicide i'll tell you something better than that chan 128 rounds there's no consideration of superior or inferior status due to social position in regard to worshiping krishna in worldly occupations there are different activities according to the different social divisions which are due to superior and inferior grades of intelligence there are no such distinctions in the process of devotional service as confirmed by the lord in chaitanya charitamrita nicha jati nahe krishna bhajane ayogya sat kul vipra nahe bhajane yogya jai bhaje sai bhado abhakta hina chhar krishna bhajane nahi jati koladi vichar a person born in a low family is not unfit for discharging devotion service to lord krishna nor is one fit for devotion service simply because he is born in an aristocratic family of brahmanas anyone who takes to devotion service is exalted whereas a non devotee is always condemned and abominable therefore in the discharge of devotion service to the lord there is no consideration of the status of ones family so this in, uh, refers to various considerations about birth about money ethnicity various opadic materialistic considerations everyone can progress in krishna consciousness Also in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said, "Sannyasi pandit koneer kori te garvan ash, nich shudra dara koren dharmeer prakash." To vanquish the false pride of so-called renunciants and learned scholars, he spreads real religious principles even through a shudra or low-born fourth-class man. So these are different ways by which Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu makes it clear. that it is dependent on one's quality and one's purity it is one one cannot calibrate vaishnavas on the basis of uh, his or her material attributes 
uh, then yes, of course, Vaishnavas need to be calibrated as first class, second class, third class, and so on. But that is based purely on spiritual considerations, not based on material considerations at all. A Grasta Vaishnava should feel satisfied with whatever food and clothing he gets without difficulty. I stated in the Chaitanya Bhagavat. Sabahoiti Bhagyavanta Shri Shak Vyanjan Puno Puno Chahak Prabhu Puren Grahan. The spinach and vegetables are the most fortunate of all, for the Lord accepts them again and again. In Bengal, the people are accustomed to getting all, whatever shark and vegetables are near their house. It is just their custom and they can make a shark out of almost anything. Anything, anything which is vegetarian, anything which is green in color, uh, they manage to do that. Actually, it's quite simple. You know, they just go out. They look for, they look for in whatever they consider a shark, and they pluck it. They bring it. They cook, and bang, it's over. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was uh, uh, very satisfied with uh, with uh, food and by implication clothing that he got without difficulty. So this is uh, an indication. This is an indication that uh, Grasa Vaishnava should be like this. It is a matter of great surprise, astonishment, and even shame when those of us who claim to be householder devotees become unnecessarily extravagant in food and clothing. You know, there was a time when I had joined in the early, uh, in the late 80s, 90s, and all. There was no concept of makeup and all that. Vaishnavas don't do these things. It's a joke. They're interested in internal spiritual progress. How can you become attractive externally? Never happened. Not for the men, neither the men nor women. These things simply, I mean, then the non devotees wonder what is this? These are what? These are Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers. There are a number of non influential non devotees in Navadip area. Navadip Mandal. Uh, they have personally told me. These are not signs of being a follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at all. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers have not been like that. You can even see the photographs of how devotees were during Prabhupada's time. How you can even look at the photographs during Bhaktisiddhanta Sarvati time. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers have always been like that. Renounced, detached, even householders, even the woman. Otherwise, you are entering into the wrong shop. This is, you know, this is a shop for Vairagya Vidya Bhakti. If you want to get the maximum possible material happiness while claiming to be Krishna conscious, this is not the shop. It's definitely not the one. And if we continue like this, and Krishna is going to show his Vishwaru. And at that time, we cannot say, why did Krishna do like this? Why did Krishna do like that? When Prabhupada was asked, uh, why didn't uh, uh, Krishna protect the Hindus from Muslim aggression? The Muslims came and destroyed so many temples. And why Krishna didn't protect uh, Indian culture? And Prabhupada simply said, Krishna is not your father's servant. That you'll do whatever you want. And uh, he has to protect you. He has given Bhagavad Gita. You don't obey, no protection. No protection basically means anybody aggresses, then you'll get no protection. That's what it means. It means he is suspending yoga, kshemam, vaham, yaham. That's what it means. Sadhu, Savdan. So, Bhagavad Swami Maharaj often says, those who claim to be sadhus, be careful. Agrasa Vaishnu should perform devotion service with undeviated attention. Knowing Krishna is the Lord of all, he should not disrespect the demigods worshipped by the Smartha Sampradaya. So, we, on one hand, uh, we are aware that Krishna is Sarveshwara, he is the Lord of everyone, including the various worshipable deities. But at the same time, he should not disrespect the demigods. The demigods are Adhikrita Dasas, they are officers uh, in the service of 
Lord Krishna within each universe. As stated in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Namane Chaitanya Pot Bolai Vaishnav Shivere Omanya Kare Vyarthatar Sob. If one claims to be a Vaishnava, but he disrespects Lord Shiva and does not strictly follow the path exhibited by Lord Chaitanya, all his efforts are futile. Literally, this verse means he does not care for the pathway shown by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, calls himself a Vaishnava. He dishonors Lord Shiva. So he, all the people like this, they are useless. It is the duty of a grihastha to work for the benefit of others, even by giving up his own self-interest. In the Chaitanya Bhagavat, it is said, Apnar bhalo ho jete jan dekhe, sujan apna chadiya poro rakhe. Some people expect only benefits for themselves, but a gentleman cares for others while giving up his own interest. In, in Vedic Dharma itself, uh, the life of a grihastha is very dignified and very noble. The more selfless one is, the more exalted he is. And householders especially have to be like that. The Vedic system is a very nice system, dharmic system. And Lord Chaitanya's devotees throughout the ages have followed that. Uh, the husband takes charge for uh, financial maintenance of the family. And the wife takes charge of the infrastructure. Uh, it is not to run a family that two, three generations. Uh, it is a very, it is like almost running a small company. And therefore, uh, women in Vedic Dharma, uh, they were excellent managers. Recently, I came across a book, uh, some industrialist wrote about his mother who was managing uh, the family. She also assisted her husband in uh, the husband's business. And he has come to the conclusion that in Hindu Dharma, um, the woman, the woman's role is that of a CEO. It's just a CEO of a uh, uh, whole family. So uh, uh, the men, they, they have to be very selfless and uh, take responsibility for helping others. This is a common principle that you find uh, throughout Vedic Dharma. A Grastha Vaishnava should respect and worship Tulasi, as stated in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. Sankhya naam loite je sthane prabhu boise, tathaya rakhen Tulasi re prabhu paashe. Tulasi re dekhen japen sankhya naam, e bhakti joge tatto ke bujhibe aam. Wherever the Lord sits to chant his rounds, he keeps Tulasi before him. He gazes at Tulasi while he chants his rounds. Who can understand the science of devotional service? Service to Tulasi is uh, exceptionally glorious. All the Vaishnava lines, they will tell you this. Uh, just by touching Tulasi, by smelling Tulasi, uh, in so many ways, you see immense uh, spiritual benefit, we are told repeatedly. A householder with devotion is glorious, while a householder without devotion is insignificant. Whatever social dealings a householder has to perform should be done while taking shelter of the holy name of Krishna. Regarding the character of the Mahajan Sri Kal Kalidas, that should be a, a that should be a dash. The Jaitanya Charitamrita states. Mahabhagavat te ho saral udar Krishna naam shankye te chalai vyavahar Kautuke te te ho jodhi pashak khelai Hare Krishna Krishna kori pashak chalai Kalidas was a very advanced devotee yet he was simple and liberal. He would chant the holy name of Krishna while performing all his ordinary dealings. When he used to throw dice in jest, he would chant Hare Krishna while throwing the dice. So this is an indication 
that even in ordinary social dealings, the householder chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra to the maximum possible extent. While picking up the phone, we say Hare Krishna. While you touch something which is very hot, you exclaim Hare Krishna. Whatever happens, you say Hare Krishna. This is all training coming. Origin originally started by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's come down. Everyone is prohibited from corrupt earning or spending and workers are prohibited from accepting bribes as stated by the Lord in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So corrupt earning, corrupt spending, accepting bribes, giving bribes. There's no scope for Golmark in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. Now, if you say, no, but we do all these things. Okay, you do all these things and we are going to get it also. We're going to get nice, uh, very interesting consequences for all of these things. Rajar Borton Khai Archuri Kore Rajadandya Hoy Se Shastre Bichare Gai Na Kori Ho Kichu Rajar Mulo Dhan Rajar Mul Dhan Dia Je Kichu Labhya Hoy Se Dhan Kori Ho Nana Dharme Kharme Bhai Asadhyaya na kari ho, jate dui lok jai. One who serves the government but misappropriates the government's revenue is liable to be punished by the king. That is the verdict of all revealed scriptures. Do not spend any of the king's revenue. First, you should pay the revenue due to the king. Due the king. Then you may spend the balance for religious and fruitive activities. Don't spend a farthing for sinful activities for which you will be the loser both in this life and the next. Therefore, they, I say bad things like, you know, we should pay our taxes. We should not try our best to avoid paying taxes. Open your eyes. Read Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Chattama. Look at Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own instructions. And then you decide what to do. A grihastha should accept a spiritual master who is full of devotion and of pure character. As stated in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Guru Jatha Bhakti Shunya Tatha Shishya Gaon. As the Guru is without devotion, so are the disciples. A householder should be particularly careful not to commit offenses against the Vaishnavas. In the Chaitanya Bhagavat, the Lord says, J Vaishnavas Thane Aparat Hoi Jar. When someone offends a Vaishnava, he's not relieved until he's forgiven by that same Vaishnava. Serving devotees is a householder's main duty. As stated in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Vaishnava, Shej Bhakshan, Etek Mohima, Kalidase, Pavailo Prabhur Kripasima. Bhakta Pada Dhuliyar, Bhakta Pada Jal, Bhakta Bhakta Avashesh Teen Mahabal. Taking the remnants of the Vaishnava's food is so valuable that it induced Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to offer Kalidas, his supreme mercy. Okay, that's a background to this. Uh, Kalidas had the habit of uh, same, that same Mahabhagavad Kalidas. He had the habit of um, serving the Vaishnavas in so many ways. Um, taking their remnants. In so many ways he honored Vaishnavas in Bengal. So when he came to Jagannath Puri, uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he would go to take darshan of Lord Jagannath at uh, the Puri Shri Mandir, uh, he would he would uh, wash his uh, feet in a particular place. And uh, the Lord had proper protocols established through his representatives that Nobody can come near him. So, no, uh, when he was washing his, uh, washing his feet before entering the temple and so on. But this Kalidas, he came and he directly uh, took that water that had washed Lord Chaitanya's feet while his feet was being washed. And he would uh, directly drink that. Uh, so Lord Chaitanya allowed it, I think, three times. Uh, that uh, everyone was astonished. How, would Lord, how, do, how is it that Lord Chaitanya is accepting Kalidas? But that is because of this. 
the dust of the feet of a devotee, the water that has washed the feet of a devotee and the remnants of food left by a devotee are three very powerful substances. Avichintya Mahashakti in Bhaktira Samrata Sindhu, the Rupa Goswami points out that a devotee who has attained Bhava Bhakti or higher, obviously, as well as Krishna's holy name, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the deity form of Krishna and Krishna's dham, these have inconceivable great potencies. And by their very nature, just like when you touch fire, you get burnt. Uh, even if one does not have Shraddha, if he simply does not commit offenses and he comes in contact with them, then immediately the effect will take place. That is why it is stated, the dust of the feet of a devotee, the water that has washed the feet of a devotee and the remnants of food left by a devotee are three very powerful substances. Of course, we understand this is Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Krishna's Navarat Goswami has his own standard of what a devotee is. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Krishna describes how a householder should act until his natural propensity for enjoying sense objects is overcome and he fully attains the characteristics of a pure devotee. Jata Shraddho Matkathasu Nirvinna Sarvakarmasu Veda Dukhat Makan Kaman Parityage Pyanishwaraha Tato Bhajeta Mamprita Shraddhalur Dridha Nishchayaha Jisha Manascha Tan Kaman Dukho Darkamscha Garhayan having awakened faith in the narrations of my glories, being disgusted with all material activities, knowing that all sense gratification leads to misery, but still being unable to renounce all sense enjoyment, my devotee should remain happy and worship me with great faith and conviction. Even though he sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment, my devotee knows that all sense gratification leads to a miserable result and he sincerely repents such activity. So Jiva Goswami has noted that um, Sense enjoyment here, even though he is sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment, this refers to only pious sense enjoyment, sinless sense enjoyment. My devotee knows that all sense gratification, uh, including pious sense gratification or sinless sense gratification, he knows that that leads to a miserable result. He sincerely repents such activities. There is no scope for sinful activities uh, in the progressive life of. A devotee. Sinless sense gratification are accepted for the purpose of uh, sustenance. Sustenance. But as we progress in Krishna consciousness, we get bored uh, of them. When the more we take shelter of Krishna, the more we become uh, internally detached and externally renounced from them. So a householder who is uh, making progress in Krishna consciousness, he will be able to realize this by himself. This also applies to uh, the ladies who are carrying out their respective duties in Krishna consciousness. When a householder has faith, he should take initiation into the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Faith, Shraddha. Unbreakable faith in Krishna consciousness. As stated in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Shraddhavan Jan Hoy Bhakti Odi Kari Uttam Madhyam Kanishta Shraddha Anusari. A faithful devotee is a truly eligible candidate for the loving service of the Lord. According to one's faith, one is classified as a topmost devotee, an intermediate devotee, or an inferior devotee. But the lowest, the Kanishta Vaishnava, um, the Kanishta Bhakti Yogi, he has unbreakable faith in, in uh, all aspects concerning Bhakti, Sambandha, Vidaya, Prayodhana. That's from Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur's commentary on Bhakti Rasamasa Sindhu. Agrasa Vaishnava must gradually acquire all the qualities mentioned in Chaitanya Chirtamrata. So this is how we test whether we are progressing or regressing. Krishna is an ocean of uh, all auspicious spiritual qualities. So when we come in touch with him, we develop some of his qualities to some degree. And when we turn away from Krishna, then those qualities also disappear. And from that, we can understand that we are regressing. In which case we should 
uh, repent, stop, turn back towards Krishna's lotus feet. Kripalu Akrita Droha Satyasar Song Nirdosh. Why is it like this? Just give me a minute. It is actually Nirdosh. They write Nidosh also sometimes. Okay, wait. Let me just check it. This is an important. 22.78. Nidosh, I'm wrong. Nidosh Padanya Mridu Suchi Akinchan Sarvopa Karak Shanta Krishnaika Sharan Akam Ani Hasti Bijito Shodgum Mitabhok Apramatam Manado Omani Gambhir Korun Maitra Kavidaksha Mauni Devotees are always merciful, humble, truthful, equal to all, faultless, magnanimous, mild, and clean. They are without material possessions. And they perform welfare work for everyone. They are peaceful, surrendered to Krishna and desireless. They are indifferent to material acquisitions and are fixed in devotional service. They completely control their six bad qualities. That means they are free from the, they are subdued. Control here has a sense of subdued. Uh, lust, anger, greed, and so forth. Ama, Krodha, Moha, Loba, Madha, Matsarja. Lust, anger, greed, pride, envy, delusion. They eat only as much as required and they are not inebriated. Apramatta. They are not inebriated in modern English means intoxicated. Uh, they are not hyper excited. Let me say it like that. They are respectful, grave, compassionate and without false prestige. They are friendly, poetic, expert and silent. So, Chunot Hathur has pointed out that we should gradually acquire all these qualities. Grishtha Vaishnava should be eager to associate with advanced devotees. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is stated, Vishnu Bhakti Janma Mool Hoi Sadhu Sangha. The root cause of devotion service to Lord Krishna is association with advanced devotees. Out of all the processes of devotion service, one should give earnest attention to the five limbs mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. As follows, Sadhu Sangha Nama Kirtan Bhagavat Shravan Mathuravash Srimurti Shraddhai Shravan Sakal Sadhana Shreshtha E Pancha Anga Krishna Prem Janmai E Panche Rolpa Sangha. One should associate with devotees, chant the holy name of the Lord, hear Srimad Bhagavatam, recite at Mathura, and worship the deity with faith and veneration. These five limbs of devotion service are the best of all. Even a slight performance of these five awakens a love for Krishna. So these are um, very, very powerful processes. Even though there are 64 items, out of these 64, these five are exceptionally powerful. Gradually, one should diminish, diminish the following of prescribed rules out of obligation and cultivate spontaneous attachment. When spontaneous attachment to the Lord is awakened, many prescriptions are automatically discarded and atonement becomes needless. The difference is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita as follows. Kamateji Krishna Bhaje Shastra Gyamani Deva Rishi Pitradikir Kavunahe Rani Bhidharma Chadi Bhaje Krishna Charan Nishidha papa chare tar kahu no he mon. Agyane va hoi jodi papu was teeth. Krishna tare shuddha pare nakorai prayas cheek. If a person gives up all material desires and completely engages in the transcendental loving service of Krishna, as enjoined in the revealed scriptures, he is never indebted to demigods, sages, or forefathers. Although the pure devotee does not follow all the regulated principles of Varnashram, he worships the lotus feet of Krishna. Therefore, he naturally has no tendency to commit sin. If, however, a devotee accidentally becomes involved in a sinful activity, Krishna purifies him. He does not have to undergo the regulative form of atonement. 
So if one gives up all activities, he gives up uh, sinful activities, he gives up his family life and family obligations, he gives up everything. And he gives up all material desires, calm and taji. And he completely engages in the transcendental loving service of Krishna as enjoined in revealed scriptures. Uh, revealed scriptures such as Sarva Dharman Parityad Jamame Kam Charanam uh, then he is not indebted. Otherwise, he is indebted. Therefore, there are the Swanishtas, Parinishtitas, and Nirapekshas. When one is spending, uh, when one uh, gives up sinful activities and offenses and spends most of his time in carrying out his material duties in Krishna consciousness and spends every day some time um, in his spiritual duties in Krishna consciousness, then he is a Swanishta. And he is obligated. Uh, he is actually he is indebted to demigods, sages, forefathers, and so on. He has to carry out uh, all these material rules in Krishna consciousness. But as he progresses, when he develops more attraction for the spiritual duties, then he spends most of his daily time in carrying out his spiritual duties in Krishna consciousness. And the material duties, he's carrying them out in Krishna consciousness, but for a lesser amount of time. So this itself indicates that uh, he is now becoming more and more uh, spiritually responsible. And then when he becomes fully mature, then he gives up, uh, gives up uh, all uh, family obligations also in order to fully serve the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So this is about that. And all of us should move in that direction. A Grastha Vaishnava should not endeavor for any knowledge or renunciation other than knowledge of one's relationship with the Lord in devotional service and renunciation born from devotional service. If one begins the worship of Krishna with special care and eagerness, then he achieves all auspiciousness. As stated in the Chaitanya Chirtamrita, Jnana Vaira Gyadi Bhaktir Kabhu Nohe Anga Ohingsa Jam Niyam Adi Bhule Krishna Bhakta Sangha the path of speculative knowledge and renunciation is not essential for devotional service. They are not parts and parcels of devotional service. Indeed, good qualities such as non-violence and control of the mind and senses automatically accompany a devotee of Lord Krishna. So when we notice these good qualities appearing in us, then we should know that we are progressing in Krishna consciousness. But when we notice that these are decreasing and these are disappearing, then we should know that we are regressing in Krishna consciousness. The gradations of devotion to Lord Krishna are stated in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. One should cultivate them as follows. One should grow in accordance with this track. Sadhu Sangha Hoite Hoi Shravan Kirtan Sadhan Bhakti Hoi Sarva Anartha Nivartan Anartha Nivritti Hoile Bhakti Nishtha Hoi Nishtha Hoite Shravanadya Ruchi Upajay Ruchi hoite bhakti hoi asakti prachur. Asakti hoite chitte jonme krishne prityanko. Chai bhav gaad hoile dhore prem naam. Chai prema prayojan sarbananda dham. When one is encouraged in devotional service by the association of devotees, sadhu sangha. Devotional service here uh, refers to the standard process, shravanam, kirtanam, vishnu and so on. One becomes freed from all unwanted contamination, anartha nivriti, by following the regulative principles, sadhana bhakti, and chanting and hearing, shravan kirtan. When one is freed from all unwanted contamination, anartha nivriti, he advances with firm faith, nishtha. When firm faith in devotional service awakens a taste for hearing and chanting, ruchi also awakens. After taste is awakened, ruchi, a deep attachment arises. Asakti. And from that attachment, the seed of love for Krishna grows in the heart. That is called bhava. At the state of bhava, one is directly one is able to directly see Krishna. One's spiritual eyesight develops, not these eyes, the eyes of the soul, you can say. When that ecstatic emotional stage intensifies, it is called love of God. Such love is life's ultimate goal and the reservoir of all pleasure. The Grihastha Vaishnava should constantly chant the holy names while carefully giving up the ten offenses. 
स्टेट इन द चैतन्य चित्तामृत भजन मध्य श्रेष्ठ नवविधा भक्ति कृष्ण प्रेम कृष्ण दीते धोरे महाशक्ति तार मध्य सर्वश्रेष्ठ नाम संकीर्तन निरपराधे नाम लोले पाय प्रेम धन Among the ways of executing devotional service, the nine prescribed methods are the best. For these processes, have great potency to deliver Krishna an ecstatic love for Him. Of the nine processes of devotional service, the most important is to always chant the holy name of the Lord. If one does so, avoiding the ten kinds of offenses, one very easily obtains the most valuable love of Godhead. So the most important activity. It is to chant the Hari Krishna Maha Mantra, and the most important prohibition is to avoid the ten offenses. The seventh offense is to commit sinful activities. So, avoiding forbidden activities or sinful activities is already included in the statement that we should avoid the ten offenses. A householder should accept pure devotional service that is not based simply on religious sentiments. In the Chaitanya Bhagavat, the Lord states. मोर नृत्य देखते उहार कौन शक्ति पयहपान करिले की मोते होय भक्ति व्हाट क्वालिफिकेशन डज ही हैव टू वॉच माय डांसिंग दिस इज विद रिगार्ड टू अ मिल्क ड्रिंकिंग ब्रह्मचारी व्हिच मींस मिल्क ओनली ड्रिंकिंग ब्रह्मचारी यू वुड ओनली कंज्यूम मिल्क बाय ड्रिंकिंग मिल्क कैन वन अटेन डिवोशन फॉर मी The problem with him was not that he was drinking milk, or that he was drinking only milk. The problem was that he thought that was. He subconsciously thought that that was enough qualification to see the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and that is certainly a mistake. Prabhupada has actually indicated that we are supposed to um, progress in Krishna consciousness in such a manner that we reduce our uh, eating, sleeping. Hearing, mating, and uh, in some places he has uh, even suggested that there are persons who simply subsist on milk. So by itself, we cannot say is wrong. But the idea that uh, just by that I can conquer Krishna, that is certainly wrong. That is certainly wrong. There is a great difference between bhakti and an activity which can. uh create a favorable environment for bhakti these are two different things to engage in activities which increase sattva guna is to create an environment which makes it possible to practice bhakti without disturbance but that does there's no guarantee it's like when you have a mosquito repellent uh on uh that does not necessarily mean that you are going to be able to uninterruptedly without disturbance carry out uh, devotion service inside that room um because it is possible that you may um, make an environment free from mosquitoes and decide not to engage in devotion service possible so simply coming to the mode of goodness uh, that is just an external environment it is quite useful and it is in fact for the vast majority of us it is very very good and recommended but one cannot uh, sentimentally think that just by doing that i will be able to uh, execute uh, pure devotion service and so on okay i will just note that yes the next Okay. Okay. Here is a question in chat. As a swanishtha, one is indebted to demigods, sages, forefathers. What does it mean in practical sense? Taking in consideration, if one waters the root of a tree, automatically all the branches, twigs, leaves, etc., are also nourished. What does it mean? 
He is first of all a swanishta. Why is he not engaging in devotion service all the time? He could become a nirupeksha, no? Who is stopping him from that? Why is he a swanishta? Why is he only spending some daily time? He has accepted Krishna into his life. He has not. The next step is you make Krishna the center of your mind. That is a parinishita. And then when you say Krishna is my only life, that is a nirupeksha. Refers to becoming a nirupeksha. Become nirupeksha. Stop everything. Give up, give up a dharma, give up dharma, like Raghunath Das Goswami says. Na dharma, na dharma, shuti kana niruptam kila guru. Give up a dharma. Give up dharma. Give up family life. Give up all these things. Simply execute devotional service to Krishna. And spread it. That's all. So that is a nirupeksha. He is the one who is watering the root. So he does not uh, need to think about uh, you know, what am I doing for my forefathers or this one or that one or uh, demigods. And he has no obligation. Basically. He's, a, he's in the exception track. But everybody else is obligated. To whatever extent, I'm not executing Krishna consciousness to the extent that Krishna wants. Now, what does Krishna want? Krishna wants everything. Absolutely. He wants us fully. He wants us to give up every other activity, every other pursuit. That is what Krishna wants. And so therefore, there is this arrangement for Swanishtas. Uh, they are indebted to demigods, sages and forefathers, but they have to execute those duties in Krishna consciousness. There is a booklet called Sadachar Smriti by, uh, it was written by Madhvacharya, actually. Some 37 verses. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasthaku translated it and into Bengali and printed it. And there it, he explains that uh, uh, one should Honor the demigods, sages, forefathers, all in, in, in devotion service to Lord Vishnu. One should understand these demigods are Vaishnava servants of the Lord and so on. One should honor them as servants of the Supreme Lord. That is what is required for such a person. But as one uh, takes to Krishna consciousness more and more seriously, both externally and internally, then these obligations will also correspondingly reduce. That is natural. That is natural. And then when he becomes absolutely fanatically fixed in Krishna's lotus feet, uh, in fully in line with Guru Sadhu Shastra, then Krishna also fanatically will take care of such a devotee. So it goes both ways. Okay, anything else? What are three types of duplicitous devotees? Oh, wow. I didn't, I have no idea what three types of duplicitous devotees. There are three types of non duplicitous devotees that we know Kanishta Vaishnava, Madhyama Vaishnava, Uttama Vaishnava. I don't know about three types of duplicitous. There must be unlimited types of duplicitous devotees. Uh, non duplicitous. They are just the like Kanishta Vaishnava, Madhyama Vaishnava, Uttama Vaishnava. The three grades of devotees. We come across it in many places. Um, a perfect Brahmana, a sinless perfect Brahmana in Krishna consciousness is a Kanishta Vaishnava. <laughs> then one who is sinless and uh, sattvic and who is purely engaged in sadhana bhakti he is a Madhyama Vaishnava. Anyabhilashita Shunyam Jnana Karma Dhyana Vrita Manakulli and Krishna Nashildam Bhakti Ruttama. The first class devotee, uh, Uttama Vaishnava, is one who has attained the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness. So that's how we grade. Even that uh, Kanishta Vaishnava is actually a very exalted position because perfect Brahman. One who is a Brahmana with no admixture of lower tendency. Brahmanas are voluntarily poverty stricken. They believe that uh, God will take care of them. So anyway, when we serve more advanced devotees and we increasingly uh, take shelter of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, um, we avoid sinful activities, offenses, then Krishna will also make us 
Anishta Vaishnava, Madhima Vaishnava, Uttama Vaishnava. And we should agree to progress in Krishna consciousness. Palladananda Guru. Uh, one minute, one minute, one minute. One minute. Yes, bro. Uh, sorry, bro. Uh, thank you for the session. Uh, regarding my first question, uh, regarding the Spanish uh, devotees, uh, you know, largely our society is made of uh, congregation devotees, you know, who you know, still exhibit some material desires. You know, they still want to have their children sent to private schools, and this, therefore you know, they should uh, listen to Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur and progress. So th that's a relation I'm asking. Uh, what is the responsibility of devotees in general? You know, when you say devotees, it's not like in our days, you know, we just lived in Mayapur and that's it. You know, we had a little bit of congregation spread out, but now predominantly it's congregation. And I don't know if this is a good news or bad news. <laughs> I mean, <I'm, that> does... <laughs> and I don't know if it's a good reason to be proud of or whether we should. It, it's, not, it's not a proud situation, but that's how the, you know, the world... Uh, anyway, that is expected. It is simply expected. We can't have everybody living in ashram. Uh, uh, everybody should... doesn't have to live in an ashram. It is not sure. that necessarily one has to... Just like Bhaktivinoda, his home was... Uh, you know, I don't, what all things are in, going on in his home? He's writing books. He's having deities. He's, he has a printing press, he's publishing, he's, he runs a journal, he chants 64 rounds. His wife also chants 64 rounds. Um, and he is uh, getting, uh, you know, he engages all of his children in full Krishna consciousness. And, he, and that's, that's not the case now. That's not the case at that all. That is exactly it, what he wants. Everyone that's not, you know, we still, have, you know, not we personally, even saying, there's still children go to play cricket. You know, there's still, we watch movies, you know, we in the sense, you know, I'm just saying as a society by large. So, where do we... We have a long, long way to go. You know, that Mangalananda Prabhu's song. <laughs> That's where we are. He's still addicted to pizza and drinking Coke. You know, so it, it, should we give up on this quote of, you know, uh, from 11th Canto, should we give up... Uh, the, it, Worshipping, you know, our indebts to sages, forefathers. Uh, I just don't understand that. You know, it's a bit of a disjoint. At there. least we should become that. At least let's become that. That is why Prabhupada wanted Varnashama Dharma. Varnashama Dharma is for people who have material desires and who are quite comfortable about having material desires. Because it puts us, you know, it, it puts a boundary, basically. Puts a boundary. Saying you have material desires and you function within this. If you want to progress in Krishna consciousness, at least over lifetimes, then you have to do that because it's absolutely incompatible with an adharmic civilization. Ravindra Suraprabhu often used to say that. Krishna consciousness, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings are absolutely incompatible with the Western civilization of today. Absolutely incompatible. Because whatever we are pushing forward, that civilization is pushing the exact reverse. It's not even pushing sideways, you know. It is pushing back. It's the exact opposite. Prabhupada used the expression, just the opposite. That is why you see Prabhupada's concept. Prabhupada was not, uh, was not, you know, he had a different concept. His concept, he knew the vast majority would be householders. And that is why he said, we should isolate ourselves from the non-devotees. We should have our own farm communities. We should not become dependent on them. We should not interact with them. We should have, we basically, we are going back to God for that. We need to do whatever we need to do. Instead of chanting 25 rounds a day, you know, if you have a farm community, you can chant 100 rounds a day and easily go back to God. This is from Prabhupada. So if you want to, you know, it, basically these are like sadhana retreat centers, but it is for householders. This is Prabhupada's concept. If you don't want that, okay, then fine. Okay, then you do whatever you want to do. But don't exp don't be in some delusion that when I die, I'm going back to God. But that's not what it is sold. I don't know. I I it, say it, very openly, very clearly. In our society, you know, like you know, the gurus, you know, it's you know, just have a veneer of Krishna consciousness, and then just maintain, uh, you know, whatever. Do your best. Do your best, and then you know, you know Chris Prabhupada opens the back door. 
this fine back yeah, and then after the back door is open then you walk through it you'll discover that he's taking you to the front door the whole back door <laughs> tamal krishna maharaj asked prabha i don't i heard it correctly from tamal krishna maharaj uh, he said so, so you become an enemy when you speak out huh? this you this thing no, no, i remember kind of this, i remember this uh, tamal krishna maharaj asked prabha prabha didn't want. He, he actually asked prabha the prabha you said krishna consciousness is very easy yeah but it's not and then prabha said i never told you it's easy i just told you it's simple <laughs> And then Tamal Krishna Maharaj, then he said, "You tricked us." Prabhu started to laugh, and he said, "If I didn't trick us, you people would not be here." Therefore, I keep saying that the Prabhu Pad outside of his books is like a huge advertisement text you see in the newspaper, and then you see a star, and then you see some ten lines of fine print. Prabhu Pad's books are that fine print. that's one of the reasons why i am becoming increasingly convinced i should do whatever is needed to make our devotees read prabhupada's books make them read bhakti shastri bhakti vaibhav bhakti vedanta bhakti make them just do it okay you'll get a piece of paper okay you'll be respected inside his con whatever i don't care read because when you read that fine print only you understand what is real krishna consciousness yeah. and it's worth it it's worth it yeah. what prabhupada did not make false complaints even for somebody as exalted as jayananda prabhu Now, Prabhupada used to say, um, apart from Jayananda Prabhu's natural humility and so on, which um, many devotees testify to, um, Prabhupada noted that Jayananda Prabhu was always chanting Hare Krishna. But when he passed away, the first time he was when he was notified that Jayananda Prabhu passed away, Prabhupada remarked that if he has any material desires, he would go to the heavenly planets. Mm-hmm. This is Jayananda Prabhu out of yeah. all. Jayananda Prabhu, and the second time when he was notified that he departed from this world in full Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada said he has gone back to God. So even if we have a little bit of material desire, vasana, vasana is more than a desire, propensity. You know, you have uh, kamana, and before that you have vasana. Vasana refers to just the smell of a desire. It's just a basic propensity. I have a desire. to eat something not desire i have a propensity to eat something this is my mind is itching and then i think about an ice cream now this is a very concrete desire but before that it's a very abstract propensity so even if i have a vasana for prakrita or material rupa rasa shabda sparsha gandha material sound touch form taste smell even if that object is overcoated with krishna consciousness like prabhat said even if you desire a mahaprasad rasgulla you'll have to come back to this world again prabhat was very clear actually it was not unclear not unclear but if you don't want to see the clear reality prabhat allows you to not see the clear reality that was a trickery you are not interested in reality he allows you to think whatever you want just do what i say but nowadays devotees uh, you know clearly understand many devotees clearly understand many devotees clearly understand and they don't feel uh, cheated and all that they actually feel very relieved that somehow or other you made me think whatever and now at least i am little bit engaged in sanity at least some part of my daily life is in satoguna you know at least i can understand that uh, the whole world is uh, you know just a mad rush towards instant sense enjoyment and it is not it is not very good they are able to understand this much actually they actually feel very much relieved um, number of devotees number of devotees i am not talking of those uh, who are in the dhams in mayapur and down in jagannath puri and so on and even talking about those uh, around the world in cities as congregation devotees even they recognize this they actually recognize this and they really thank lord chaitanya mahaprabhu they thank the prabhu they thank the entire parampara this is the reality the number of devotees are waking up see 5 years 10 years was okay but 20 years 30 years 40 years we understand the nature of sense enjoyment it is not that one particular type of sense enjoyment is wrong it is sense enjoyment the very activity is is, is wrong i am a diabetic this is an example from prabhu i am a diabetic Okay, so I should not take sugar. 
Now you may give me sugar in any form, or you may mix it with any kind of food stuff. Whatever it may be, it is it is bad. So after some time, we actually begin to understand. Krishna makes us understand that material sense enjoyment in any any form combination is simply it's simply unhealthy for us. It does it does not make us do good. It clouds our intelligence. We then regret making decisions that we made when we were in a in Tamoguna or Rajoguna. So we begin to understand. You know, it's, it's okay one time, two times, three times, four times, but ten times, hundred times. 300 times, 400 times, uh, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. So we begin to understand, begin to understand. And that's reality. And devotees do make progress in Krishna consciousness when they simply st stick to the routine activities of sadhana bhakti. This is the routine activity. You chant 16 hours. You read Prabhupada's books occasionally on a regular basis. You try to spread Krishna consciousness in any manner that is realistic in your life. Uh, devotees do understand. It is a fact that today's devotees have more maturity in understanding the intricacies of Krishna consciousness than in the past, during 80s, 90s, and so on. Devotees nowadays do understand. In today's ISKCON, um, when the devotees sign up for something like Bhakti Shastri, and when you come to Upadeshamrita, Nectar of Instruction, and you say, this is actually Krishna consciousness, uh, at least 50% of the students immediately say yes. Whereas previously, only one out of 20 students would say yes. Those 19 students would say uh, during those times, in the year 2000, like that, they would say, no, this is very exalted Krishna consciousness. But now 50% of the students they say, no, correct. This is standard Krishna consciousness. ISKCON is the uh, devotees within ISKCON, they are beginning to understand. I've been told that Prabhupada uh, said something to this effect that over the decades, our devotees will understand much better about how spiritual progress occurs. Anyway, those are some thoughts. Devotees do understand. See, it is also after some time, uh, you don't feel like giving up Krishna consciousness also. Um, even if you feel that it is too difficult, it is also sweet. It has its own attraction. Even the children born to our devotees, um, who overall in general dislike is gone. And generally seem to be critical of is devotees and leaders. Even they like certain activities of Krishna consciousness very much. They like uh, chanting, uh, less chanting on beats, but more uh, kirtans. They like deity worship. They like the dhams. They like the holy rivers. Um, they like Krishna consciousness. The fact, and even when they take to Krishna consciousness at a certain age, you know, at a certain age, they themselves, as adults, knowing very well the nature of uh, how Krishna consciousness entangles you more and more and more in spiritual activities, they take to Krishna consciousness. You know that this movement, by Krishna's own will, is becoming stronger and stronger. It happens. It's a real fact. A real fact. A number of these uh, second generation, uh, you know, they they have desires to spend more time in the dhams. We have these kind of desires from where these ideas are coming. The same person will be criticizing a hundred devotees in a, in, a, in a month. The same, uh, the same uh, boy or girl has these desires. No, I must chant. I must read. These are all actually very good activities. They're very inspired by devotees who walk their talk. Real. Krishna consciousness will certainly uh, take very firm root throughout the world. There's no going back. Prabhupada himself said, you know, it is like starting a fire, like in a forest. He said the fire is already started. No, they you know, cannot go back. I don't think we need to be disheartened. We just need to deliberate on 
the various priorities that we have in our lives. Krishna is more eager than us to bring us to Krishna consciousness, full-fledged Krishna consciousness. That much I can see. And this is desirable, actually. When we take to Krishna consciousness, not because my guru is saying it or that devotee is saying it or something like that. And instead, out of my own experience of the advantages of Krishna consciousness, it will be stronger. Prabhupada himself has said, don't just follow me just because thousand people are following Prabhupada. That is sentimental. He said, no. You practice Krishna consciousness and you yourself through experience, you progress. Because it's my own experience. It's my own experience. Just like when I'm sitting amongst a hundred devotees and uh, I have a certain idiosyncrasy. I don't like to take spicy food. But let us say I'm sitting in a row, prasadam row, with uh, 250 Bengali devotees who all love spicy food. I alone will not take spice. That is, you know, myself. I am myself. And all of us keep doing things like that. You know, we are not shy. We don't care. What, you know, just because everybody else is eating a food that you don't like, you're also supposed to eat it. So like that, even though we may be living in the midst of non-devotees, at some point, when the direct experience of Krishna consciousness, when that overwhelms uh, our souls, then we simply don't care. All these neighbors, okay, whatever they're doing, I am directly experiencing the benefits of Krishna consciousness. Why should I be bothered about what my office co-worker is thinking about this? That courage, you may even call it arrogance, uh, that will naturally come. It will come. The process will work. You touch fire, you have to get burnt. And we have all touched fire unknowingly. So what can be done? Now we, we, we can just go ahead. Anyway, we didn't know. Now we know. Now let's touch even more fire. That's it. All right, we'll discuss further on Telegram. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.